In this video, I'm gonna start working on the home page for the blog. And as you can see from my screen, I have reddit.com in the background. And I have reddit.com there because I want it to kind of look like reddit.com. I want the feed to kind of be these little sections and it will continue going down as I scroll. And uh, I want a kind of another section, another column over here where I can click to create a new blog post. So uh, so basically, yeah, I want to I want to I want to model the blog after reddit.com. And also later, we're going to have a search uh, menu up in the top, just like Reddit does. So that's what I am going to get started on in this video. So the first step is we're going to edit home.html. So I'm going to go into the templates. Go. Is it? No, it's in personal, personal templates, personal home.html and I'm going to start trying to make this look like uh, reddit.com. So first I think uh, I want to delete most of this stuff. So delete all the user stuff, uh, delete this heading and I want to, I'll add some CSS and later um, I'm just going to write out the CSS. Actually I'm just going to copy paste it in to be honest and then then um, when I when I start designing it, I'll, I'll kind of talk about what does what. I just don't think it's very useful to sit here and watch me type out a bunch of CSS. So I'm going to the source code. This branch is named, uh, what is it? I don't know, I can just click on any of the older branches. It doesn't matter. Go to source, go to personal, go to, actually maybe I should look at the branch. Modeling the blog using reddit.com. Modeling the blog using reddit.com. So home.html. And I'm just going to copy all of the CSS. So I'm copying that and I will put that in here. So don't worry if you don't know what's going on here. I'm going to talk about that in just a second. Right after I uh, kind of write out as I kind of design this, uh, this home screen layout. So first is I need that kind of middle section. So I'm going to label this the blog feed. And that's going to be the middle section. And I also want to copy this and have end blog feed just to kind of keep it organized. So inside here, I want to do div and this is going to have a class. Class is going to be uh, left column, which I've defined up here. So it has padding of zero pixels. So just so you know, uh, it's going to be column large seven and offset large one. What that means is so the way bootstrap, uh, the bootstrap column columns work, if you don't know, is there's 12 columns total total. And what I, so what I'm saying right there is I'm saying create a column that has a length of seven, seven out of the total 12, and has an offset of one. So if you can imagine the bootstrap columns going 12 across the whole thing, there's like one, two, three, four, five, six, all the way up to 12. I'm saying make this occupy seven out of the 12 and offset it by one. So basically it's like saying shift in one and then occupy seven. So shift in one, occupy seven. So it's gonna be like a little kind of piece that's away from the left hand side. Uh, the next the next column or the next section, yeah, the next column, I guess it'll call it, is the create. So this will be like the right create uh, post column. So that's gonna be the one on the right hand side. And I wanna copy that and do end just like before. So this one is gonna be similar, but I wanna occupy the remaining space. So class is gonna be right column, which I have defined up here, which again has uh, zero padding under no normal circumstances. And this is going to be uh, column large three. So, and then D large flex, meaning it's gonna exist when, it's, uh, when there's a large screen and it's gonna be invisible if it's smaller than a large screen. So this is confusing, I know, uh, but what this is saying is saying, if the screen is larger than the large size, um, which you can look up bootstrap column sizes, you can just go bootstrap column sizes, Google it and it'll show you, you can just click on the grid system and read about that, read about you know which size is which, so you can see that extra small is less than 700, 768, small is greater than that, medium, large. So there's different sizes basically. And I'm saying if the screen is large, uh, less than a large size, make this whole thing invisible. Just hide it, get rid of it. That's what D-none means. Um, but if it is if it is large or bigger, then I want it to occupy three. So this is gonna occupy seven, this is gonna occupy three, and then we have an offset of one. So that's a total of 11. So that means uh, how it's gonna be broken up on the website is there'll be that offset of one, then seven for the regular feed, and then three for the right-hand feed, and then there'll be one left remaining over here. So that 
7 plus 3 will be centered with 1 on each side. And if that was confusing to you, this is not a bootstrap course, so I'm not going to be talking more about it. I encourage you to go and do some research and, uh, talk and learn about bootstrap columns and how they work. Uh, so the last one I'm going to make here is I'm going to copy this. I'm going to put it at the top. This is going to be the right create post uh, bar. It's not going to be a column. This is the one that's going to show um, if the screen is uh, not if it's smaller than the large size. So this one shows if it's large or bigger. This one is going to show if it's uh, large or smaller, or if it's sorry if it's smaller than large. So this is going to get get a class of create uh, post bar, which it's another styling that I have up here right there. So column large none, meaning hide it if it's larger than the large, if it's big if it's large or bigger. And then I want to do uh, let's see delete. I want to delete some of this. This is column large seven, and then I want to do offset large one. So it's going to be the same as as the blog feed basically. So if the screen is um, actually, I'm going to stop just trying to explain it, and I'm going to just show you after I have it after I have it all kind of um, in here. So let's do a, and there's going to be a URL in here which we don't have yet. This is going to be create post inside of the feed I'm going to add some kind of dummy stuff so div class blog post container and I'm just going to do like thingy this is just to uh, occupy some space so I have something to demonstrate in a second it's going to help me explain kind of how this is going to work so I'll, I'll copy paste a bunch of them in there and then inside here inside of the right hand side column uh, let's do div class I already have the right column this is create post bar and inside here I can just do like stuff and copy paste this a bunch of times and do maybe and this is going to be the link to actually create a post so create post okay so if I save that let's take a look and I'm going to talk about this so um, that's not right let's go back so what's going on I think that the top was showing correctly so if I sh if I shrink this down notice I get that create post thing up top there that's the way it should be but as it gets to the large size this should be over here so something is wrong with uh, with what's happening here. Uh, I think it's this. Yeah, this should be row. So change that to row. There. So almost right. It, this just needs to be at the top. So right now it's. So that's good. That's good. It goes over to that side, which is correct, but it needs to be shifted up to the top. It looks like there's uh, some padding or something that shouldn't be there. So if I scroll up, let's take a look. Um, blog post container margin margin also too uh, I should say like some like sometimes this isn't easy to figure out when you're trying to figure out uh, how to line things up a trick that I used to use or I usually use is I go border one pixel solid uh, black and I add the and I add a border to each one of these so I can see exactly what's happening so if I add borders to them and I go back I can see exactly kind of where everything is contained and now now the the issue is pretty obvious. So when, uh, so right now, if that's good, the smaller sizes are all good. That's doing what it's supposed to. But as soon as it gets to the larger sizes, this should be hidden. This because we have this kind of right bar over here. There's no reason to have a create post bar at the very top. So that's the problem. This needs to be hidden. So if I come in here, uh, and the the problem should be with this one here. So it's column large none this uh, this should be D large none, not column large none. So it was a typo. So now if I refresh that, uh, there we go. That's exactly what we want. So now I can remove those borders. So keep that in mind if you're trying to figure out like the, the columns and how to line things up. Just add borders to stuff because then you can see exactly kind of what's happening. So now this is exactly what we want. So each one of these thingies you can imagine would be a blog post going down the feed and then this is going to be kind of that right hand section where it'll be this little view maybe like a little bit of text and then I can click here to create a post that's what that's what our that's what our website is going to look like in general anyway obviously this is a vast very very simplified version but in general this is going to be the structure so now let's move on to the next part and set up those URLs so we need a we need a URL to create a post basically so let's go into blog and this is going to be something that you haven't seen before. I'm going to right click on blog, go to new file and save it as urls.py. So inside the blog section there, it's going to have its own, its very own uh, URLs. 
So I want to do from django.urls import path. And from blog.views, I want to import. We haven't made this yet, but there's going to be a, a view for creating a blog post. So create blog view is what it will be called. Like I said, haven't created it yet. We need a parameter named app name to give the name to whenever you create a URLs inside of an app that's not inside of the main URLs. So just like we did, we just created a new file. We need to reference, we need to add an app name parameter. This is a required step. You must do this. So if this was created inside of account, you would, you would call this account, but obviously we're inside blog. So I'm naming this blog. Now I want to specify URL patterns, just like in the regular URLs file. And we're doing the same kind of thing we always do. So path, this is going to be create, uh, create blog view, and I want to give it a name, just give it a name equals create. So the same, the same sort of things we do in the other URL file, nothing different here. You have path, you have the URL, the view, and then the name, nothing nothing sort of surprising here, uh, nothing new. So now if I save that, obviously we're not done yet because we need to create this create blog view. Um, but actually before I do that, I wanna go into URLs, the, the, the large URLs file, and I need to add the, I need to basically reference this URLs file so that this URLs knows uh, where to find all the rest of the blog URLs. So I need to import, uh, an include library or include package from Django URLs. And now I'm going to copy one of these. I'm going to give this a name of blog and I'm going to write, I'm gonna get rid of all this and write include and then reference blog.urls, which is the file that we just created. And I wanna do comma and I wanna give it a name of blog. And that's all I need to do. So now any URL for the blog will always start with blog and then slash whatever. So just like, for example, just to give you an idea, it'll be like blog slash create. That's what we're aiming to create, or that's the URL that we're gonna be using to create blog posts. So we have this set up, we have this set up, we have these two things associated. Next is creating the view for creating that blog. So let's import our model. So from blog.models import blog post. Then I want to define the view. So create blog view, take the request, then return render request. We want to do blog, which we haven't created this view yet. We're going to create that in just a second. So create blog.html. And then I want to return context, which we won't use any yet. So save that. And now the last step is creating this HTML file. So I'm going to right click on blog, go to new folder, name it templates inside templates, another new folder, blog, same kind of thing we've done before, nothing new here. Now I'm gonna create a new file and call it create blog.html. Now I'm gonna go into home and copy the block content and the extends, do end block content, just like we've done before, nothing, nothing new here, nothing surprising. And this is gonna be um, create a new blog. I don't have to actually write anything in here yet. So we have everything we need now, everything should be set up. So if I go to the website, oh, I can add the URL actually. So let's go into home.html. Remember we have this kind of dummy URL right here. Let's actually add that URL for creating a blog post. So I need to go blog and do create. That's gonna be the namespace for creating a blog post. And I wanna do the same thing here. So if I save that and go back to our project, and I was to refresh this, click right here, there's blog slash create, and it takes us to that creating a new blog page. And if I was to shrink this, we get our bar up here, I click that, it takes me to the same place. So there we go, we have kind of all of the associations set up for creating a new blog. The only thing that I wanna maybe spend another minute on here is explaining this. So what, what is this format? Why do I do blog colon create? The reason I have to do blog colon create is because we, we created that secondary URLs file. So um, remember here we have, this is shared in the namespace of blog. That's why I have to write blog and it's referencing blog create. So it's saying, look in the URLs file that's named blog and look for the URL that's named create. That is what's, whoops, that's what's happening uh, right here. All right, so now that we have all the associations all set up, we have the URL, we have uh, basically all the, the, 
the starting the starting points for creating this new blog page this new blog post page now in the next video i can create the form for actually creating that blog post and adding it to the da database